But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born of the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as children. This text from Galatians chapter four does not sound like a traditional Advent or Christmas Eve text. Where are the angels? Where are the shepherds for crying out loud? But if we take in consideration the definition of the word Advent, or consider what Christmas Eve is all about, this reading from Galatians makes perfect sense. The word Advent is defined in the American Heritage Dictionary as the coming or the arrival, especially of something that's been awaited that's monumentous. What's monumental? What is the monumentous thing that we are waiting in our church? What are we waiting for in our communities and in our world? Are we expecting anything amazing? Are we expecting anything miraculous or extraordinary? In what ways are we watching and preparing and expecting God to show up this Christmas? The word became flesh and dwelt among us full of grace and truth. And we have beheld his glory, glory as the only son from the father. God's timing is flawless in that at the right moment in time, God's long awaited redemptive breaking into human history is revealed, consummated and made manifest. Prophetic salvation is fulfilled in the birth of Jesus Christ and in him alone are God's ultimate purposes and promises made real. In the advent of the birth of Jesus, God, in the words of the hymn writer, breaks the power of canceled sin. He sets the prisoner free at the right time. Christ has died, Christ has risen, and Christ will come again. And this is our hope that was born in Bethlehem. But you, Bethlehem Ephrata, though you are small among the tribes of Judah, out of you will come for me one who shall be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. This is our Christmas hope. My mom called it buying on time, but I called it what the Lawnberg Department Store called it, the layaway plan. And whatever it was called, I hated it. I hated walking down to the Lauren Bird department store and picking out clothes for school or, or gifts for Christmas and, and needing to wait until my mom was able to pay all of it so that we can get it out. And I was always waiting on that time. Time is everything. Swing the baseball bat at the right time can be the difference between a strikeout or a home run. Wide receivers, routes, and the quarterback's passes are all about timing that might be the difference between a touchdown or an interception. Timing is everything to a good story, a punchline of a joke. Even when planting a garden, timing is important. If you plant too soon, a late frost can kill the seedlings. If you plant too late, the crop will not mature before the snow falls. Timing is everything. And God's timing is flawless, perfect. It is like the gospel song that says, he's an on time God. He may not come when you want him, but he'll be there right on time. And right on time, when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, and all of creation and salvation history was arranged for the moment when God would speak God's ultimate word to a lost, hurting world, a world that was locked in darkness. In the fullness of time, God wrapped up all of history in the word made flesh. God arranged everything so that just at the right time, just as the prophecy had said, everything would happen just so. When creation was groaning under the weight of darkness and sin and evil and injustice and oppression, when the forces of evil seemed to be winning the day, God spoke light into the darkness with a star shining in the night sky, signifying the birth of the Messiah. When the world was crying out, how long? 
God's plan to reconcile creation was unfolding over time. And I'm sure that many people must have felt God's timing was off. It seemed the world was not ready during Jesus' first advent. They were not ready for God's timing to be fulfilled in the manner that it happened. The Jewish people could not have been happy that Rome had conquered them and was using Herod as a puppet king to rule over them. How could God keep God's promises when the Romans were ruling over them? You could almost hear the longing in their voices when they repeated the woeful song of the lament found in Psalm 137. By the waters of Babylon, there we sat down and we wept when we remembered Zion. On the willows there we hung up our harps, for our captors asked of us a song, and our tormentors asked for mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. But how could we sing the Lord's song? in a foreign land. But God's plan was coming together at the right time. In the unlikeliest of ways and in the unlikeliest of people. Think about Mary and Joseph when, when they heard the decree of, of Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And I can also imagine Joseph, just a hint of him, throwing up his hands in frustration. Mary is about to have a baby. This was no time to be traveling. The timing could not have been worse. But God's ways are not our ways and God's thoughts are not our thoughts. What a bad time to be in Bethlehem with a pregnant wife. No room in the end. But this too was a part of God's perfect timing. For at the right time, God lowered himself and entered the world under the lowliest of circumstances. Jesus did not have a crib or a cradle, but only an animal's trough to lay his head. What kind of God is this? Who would choose such a such seemingly bad timing, such God-awful circumstances to redeem humankind and all of creation? But this was a part of God's plan part of God's perfect timing to redeem you and me and the whole world. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, redeeming those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as children. And this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophets. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. In our world today, people are asking over and over again, how long, O oh Lord? How long before you return? How long will this darkness prevail? How long will injustice and oppression and, and sin and evil rule the land? How long? Will we remain in this darkness of alienation? How long before ultimate peace and love will reign? We wait, we prepare, and we watch with expecting hearts for your coming, O oh Lord. I'm always reminded at this point of Martin Luther King Jr. And if you ever get a chance to hear some of his sermons and, and you're here in the background, somebody saying, how long? And Martin Luther King Jr. would say, not long, not long in the fullness of time when God will speak in a baby crying in the night. How long, not long, when God would God, would God magi, not long. I believe that even in our world today at the right time, God's grace working in us through Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit is pushing against the darkness. But before kingdoms change, people must change. In the coming of Jesus, we have an inheritance that calls us to live differently, to see one another differently as those who are watching and waiting and preparing for God's fullness time 
and we do it in hope, love, joy, and peace. And so where is God's fullness of time being fulfilled in your life? Where is God's timing being fulfilled in your community and in your church? For brothers and sisters, waiting is not a passive thing. Advent waiting, waiting on the Lord is an active waiting because somehow we know that in the fullness of time, God will show up and God's will will be done. And so we must not be passive when it comes to living as people who in the fullness, in fullness of time because part we become a part of the unshakable kingdom. Therefore, when the timing in life seems to be going the wrong way, or seems to be a long time coming, when your hopes and dreams do not seem to work out, when you feel like throwing up your hands in frustration and shouting, how long, O oh Lord, remember God's timing. It often works contrary to our timing, but God's timing is flawless. Nothing, not even time itself, could stop God from sending Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and nothing will stop God in our day and time. I know it gets dark sometimes, but in the fullness of time, I know that there might be rivers to cross and valleys to endure and mountains to climb, but somehow I believe in the fullness of time, God comes. In God's time, and we can say with the Apostle Paul on this Christmas Eve, because of God's timing, I am convinced that neither life, nor death, nor angels, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depths, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. All of this is made possible in the fullness of God's time. When the angels appeared to the shepherds saying, do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find the child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angels a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying glory to God in the highest heavens and on earth, peace among those whom he favors and loves. What should we be watching, preparing and waiting for the fullness of God to break in around us? And finally, friends, I cannot go on this Christmas Eve without sharing a poem that I've written. And it's called Sweet Child of Mine. What did Mary see? Gazing into the eyes of God needing milk on silent nights in Bethlehem, a hungry stomach's craving. What did Mary hear? In the soft cooing of God made flesh, a child for all the world so human, tiny fingers touching her face, Reflections of salvation gleaming brightly in divinity's eyes, tenderly resting upon Mary's lap, rock peacefully into deep sleep. Cries, penetrating midnight silence, God listening to redemption song. Sweet voices, mother and child, singing with one heart, with one hope. Hush, little baby, don't you cry. Heaven knows why you weep. Why you weep tears deep enough to heal the world. A mother always knows in the fullness of time. Down in Bethlehem, God speaks his word of redemption and peace and love and justice. In the fullness of time, God does something amazing, wonderful, 
miraculous in the fullness of God's time. Open your heart and receive this gift that redeems us all and sets creation right. Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth with those with whom he favors, those that he loves. And so when you wake tomorrow on Christmas Day, I pray that you will see it as God's fullness of time, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.